Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make a couple cards that would be great for Valentine's Day, but you could also use them for other occasions if you don't like to send Valentine's cards. I'm using some new supplies from our sponsor, TopFlightStamps.com. Um, these are artist trading coin products, and I've never heard of them before, so um, I thought well, they'd be kind of fun to try. Now, what I have here are some uh, MDF circles. They're really thin, kind of wooden circles that can be used as bases, and also some stamps and stencil to go with it. I didn't end up using the stencil on this product, but I had a couple cool ideas for the stamps. And I like my projects to be really practical, so to get my feet wet on this on this new size, something new to me, I thought I would make something that I know I would totally send to someone. So I'm first stamping this image. It looks like a maze. I'm pretty sure it is a maze. Uh, and I'm just stamping it on heavyweight white cardstock. Now I kind of made a boo-boo here. I'm using a brand new quilters mat, which I thought would look really good as a background to my video because um, it's kind of a neutral gray color, but I forgot to put a mouse pad or anything underneath my stamping surface. So I grabbed my stamping mat, which is just kind of like a, um, a thick foam mat from Caravelle Studios, and I put that under my cardstock and gave it an extra push for good measure, and I got a perfect impression. Uh, the ink I'm using is a VersaFine clear ink in the color Glamorous, and that does give a really nice impression, and it's really nice if you like to emboss or watercolor. I probably should have embossed that maze, and it would look kind of plasticky, like a, like a gumball machine maze. Now I'm also stamping this one that looks like a wood slice because I thought it'd be really fun um, to get to kind of make the coin look like one of those wood slice ornaments that were really popular around Christmas time people were making Christmas tree ornaments with it but those um, packs of the wood slices could get pretty expensive and sometimes they can't like the bark would fall off so I thought this would be a perfect uh, solution for that you can make as many as you want because you have the stamp and um, then you could decorate them up however you like, double-sided and everything. So um, that's something I might do for Christmas time next year, but for now I'm just kind of, you know, trying it out on a card. That's a great thing about cards. You know that you can try things out on cards and not have, not have to make it a big deal, you know? You can try out a technique and see if you like it. And it's just a card, it's just a piece of paper. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to put so much pressure on yourself like you might if you were making a, a gift for somebody or making an art journal page or something that was a little bit larger. That's my thought anyway. So with the inked edges on that a wooden coin there, I think it really looks like a, a like a wood slice. And, um, you know, just kind of brushing that caramel ink over the brown stamping also tones it down enough that I think it looks kind of natural. Now for the, the uh, amazing card, the card with the maze, I thought it would be neat if I could find some sort of like animal to put in there. And then I thought of this meerkat stamp set that I got a couple months ago. I thought this would be really cute because they have such personality. And this one here looks like he's either juggling or carrying something big. And I thought it would be really great if he was carrying the maze. So, you know, mix your stamps up and, you know, see, put things in different, you know, put different stamp sets together and see what, like, what works. Now for easy coloring, I thought I would just use my watercolors and since I'm going to cut it out by hand, I went right outside of the lines. So it only takes you a few seconds to color an image like this. And the bonus is if you're cutting it out with scissors by hand, like I'm going to today, um, and you don't cut perfectly, which I don't, having a little bit of watercolor on the outside, it prevents you from having weird white edges. I tried cutting around the fingers on that hand. I just couldn't make it happen. So I decided that I would cut them off and show you how I deal with it in a couple minutes because I'm just, I just don't have the dexterity to cut between little fingers like that. I thought this paper was really cute. It was from this stack of paper that was all like different kinds of foods and it's double-sided paper. So I have the dilemma of what side do I use because they're both so cute. You know that, I, I hear that other crafters have that problem too with double-sided paper. It's almost like it's so cute you need to buy two sheets. So it really has no benefit over single-sided paper sometimes, but I thought the sprinkles would work really well for this. Now, the meerkat isn't quite big enough to, to, you know, be carrying the maze, so I thought I would do a little stamp surgery. So first I'm gonna stamp the meerkat on the pattern paper, and this is gonna um, solve the problem of not cutting around his eyebrows and fingers. So I can glue him right on top of that and have the, the fingers and um, eyebrows show up. And now since I need the meerkat to be taller, I'm actually gonna do a little surgery and cut him in half and literally stretch the use of the stamp. So anytime you have any like people or critter stamps, you can cut them in half so you can stretch them out to fit your card so they can be carrying something, whatever you need to do, but you just like doubled the use of all of those types of stamps. So there, so now we can carry the, he looks like he's kind of like staggering backwards because it's so big. Um, that's kind of the look that I was going for. 
I thought that uh, that it just kind of added a little bit of whimsy because I think this would be really fun to you know give to your child or if you're a teacher you can make these up for your kids like how great would that be to do like a little valentine for all your students that said you're amazing or maybe a treat bag if you like to do treats uh, I thought that would be a really cute tag or yeah do it like a tag and then it could be a bookmark and again I forgot my stamping mat so I had to stamp amazing again and I just used a really old set of um, unmounted alphabet stamps I had I've recently gone through my craft room I have been just going through everything, touching everything that I own. And what that does is it reminds you of products that you've forgotten about. It's not enough just to like flip through. I think actually taking everything out, dumping it on your table, and then re-putting it back in your storage really makes you see what you have. I would never have remembered that I had that old stamp set because it's probably like 10 years old, but it worked perfect for this. That funky font that was kind of a little quirky, mixing the upper and lower case. Um, a pun never hurts. I just thought that was just a nice touch for this card. Now these are little enamel dots. I find that I really enjoy using them. Um, the nice thing about them is that you can't really mess them up. They're not a big enough element that you can really go that wrong. And I kind of like the idea that it looks like he's kind of just thrown confetti in the air or he was juggling and dropped the balls. So I thought it was whimsical and fun. I didn't want pattern paper on the other card though. I was afraid that it might overwhelm that brown on brown uh, wood slice element that I had made. So what I did was I just embossed a piece of craft, craft cardstock and inked it up. And then I'm just going to attach that to a red piece of cardstock. I use the same cardstock for both cards. I just cut a sheet in half and folded it and it made two cards. So that's a great way. If you can use up your supplies when you're using them um, to make another card, it just saves you the time from storing scraps and, um, you know, you get to get more bang for your buck. I took a die cut of a kind of a spray of leaves and adhered that over the pattern paper because it, I mean, over the embossed paper because it just was a little too plain. And then I tucked in some of the innies from the die cuts um, in behind the, the, uh, the stump. I want it to kind of look like a stump. And now kind of playing on the idea of, you know how sweethearts would carve their names into trees? That's kind of what I'm going for. So I stamped you and me with that same font that I used on the other card and used a brown pen to add a plus and to also kind of um, outline the letters a little bit so they'd be a little darker. And then I just stamped a heart. But then looking at the heart, I thought it didn't look quite bright enough. So I do end up punching a piece on top of that. Now, these are just a fabric sample. They came from a like a furniture place. It was all discontinued fabrics, but I thought the material was really neat. So I die cut a little heart out of it. So anytime you have some like little scraps of weird material like vinyl or um, it could be an interesting cereal box, you know, any of those weird materials that you like, those are great for die cutting classic shapes out of and using for embellishments on cars. And there you can see, I just took my like, you know, 20 year old <laughs> heart paper punch and glued that on because I thought it just stood out a little bit better. I think the stamping looked good too. I'm not sure which one I like better really at the end, but I did put another heart on the first card. I just kind of bounced it on his foot because he seems like the kind of guy that would try to be carrying something with every, every hand and feet. Um, to make the you and me stand out a little bit more, I used a light kind of tan peach colored color pencil and I just kind of went around my stamping just to make the letters a little more apparent because I was afraid that they didn't stand out as much as I wanted them to. So don't be afraid to use your media and just kind of, you know, you know, pop your elements a little bit like that. I used to do that with stickers a lot, kind of shading around my stickers so they would look a little bit better. But there you have it. You can find the supplies I used at our sponsor, TopFlightStamps.com or substitute what you have at home because it's always good to use what you have. I hope you enjoyed this project. Until next time, happy crafting.